Hey everyone, uh, before we start, I just wanted to let you know that in this video, I won't be talking about any leaks directly. There may be talks about things that have now been confirmed or leaks from previous games, but I won't be talking about anything that isn't confirmed in Scarlet and Violet. Uh, so it's a safe discussion for everyone, whether you have viewed the leaks or avoided the leaks. Uh, if you do follow the leaks, please don't reveal anything in the comments. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Let me know how you feel about leaks in the comments down below. And we're working our way up to a thousand subs. So please. All right. So love them or hate them with a week left before the release of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Leaks are everywhere. But why do some people love them and why do some people hate them? Well, today I'm going to try to explain some reasons why I think uh, people feel a certain way and I want to hear from you in the comments down below. How do you feel about leaks? But anyways, let's get into this. The first reason why I think most people want to know leaks or they like leaks is FOMO, fear of missing out. Some people want to know they don't like the idea of someone letting something that they don't are being out of the loop of the conversation in their friend group. Imagine all of your friends sitting in a group chat talking about what has leaked and you have to leave the group conversation or maybe even leave Twitter for an amount of time. Nobody wants to be the person that's left out of the loop. So I think some people might be okay with leaks just because they don't want to be left out. They don't want to miss out on the conversations. They don't want to miss out on participating. And they don't want to be out of the loop when someone else knows something. This really isn't a good reason to like a leak or to change your mind, but it all depends on where you put your foot down on the morals and values of viewing leaks. The second reason I think most people like leaks is impatience. Most people are very impatient now and they hate waiting. We live in a time where Amazon ships most things to you in two days or less and information is at our fingertips at all time with technology. So most people aren't used to waiting for a long time anymore, especially when that weight is out of their control. I do think this plays a big factor in a lot of people just wanting to know it now, especially with the new cycle that Pokemon chooses where they review, they let out a little bit of information um, every couple of weeks and it seems like with scarlet and violet and sword and shield it definitely decreased because they let a lot out during the sort the sun and moon era the next reason why i think people are okay with leaks is vgc and the idea of vgc being okay with leaks is why i wanted to make this video in the first place so for those of you who do not know, VGC is the competitive aspect of Pokemon. And I think most of my audience falls in this category. I do mostly create VGC content, you know, like and subscribe. But many people outside of VGC tend to forget that VGC in itself is an information game with a sprinkle of RNG and luck thrown into it. Let me break down what I think the three basic levels of VGC are. One, general knowledge. This is Pokemon typing, move pull, base stats, speed tiers, things you need to know about Pokemon at a basic level to help you try to beat an opponent. How can you hit a super effective move if you don't know what your opponent's Pokemon's typing is? How well are you going to do turn one if you don't know if your opponent's Pokemon are faster than yours? So this is information that is just overall everyone should know it whether you're casual or not like you'll learn it over time but for a vgc player this is base knowledge and it's in most aspects things you have to have to do well the next two levels is uh one knowledge of your team your team strength and weaknesses its strategy and how it handles the meta this is planned with move uh pulls with what moves you have on your team what's your strategy how are you going to set up what's your sweeper what are your ev spreads what kind of hits can you take and then the third one being knowledge of your opponent's team this is basically the same thing 
as knowledge of your team, but you have to discover this throughout battling and the meta. When you face an opponent for the first time, you don't know their items, you don't, you might not know their terror types, you don't know what moves their Pokemon have. So this is knowledge that you learn throughout playing, which is why most VGC outside of Japan is best of three, because over those three games, you can adjust and get knowledge of how your opponent is going to try to beat you and try to counter that. The first one though is what we're really looking at here when we talk about the leaks. Most leaks competitive players are interested in is the information. What are the base stats? What are the move pools? What are the typings? Abilities, available Pokemon, you get it. With this, you get the information fast with leaks. You can take time to plan. You can take time to prepare. You can take time to know about the game. It, you've definitely heard VGC players talk before about how they've printed out the speed tiers and they've basically learned what order Pokemon are based on their speed and who ties with who, who doesn't. Now getting this information first or getting this information quicker doesn't mean that you're going to win. Time is different for everyone and people need less or more time to prepare. It's just how well is your team how well do you play it how well do you handle your opponent's team but information helps with that and having this information does help you keep up with the meta now we aren't going to get competitive until december 1st and we're not going to get events until the first of january but that doesn't mean that people didn't already take the part of the decks that leaked and put it on a showdown server to practice battling with team compositions and terrestrializations, even though no new Pokemon were introduced yet. When it comes to story leaks, I myself, I stay away from it. I want to discover that on my own, but that Pokemon da data, I want ASAP. Heck, I've heard of some VGC players who never complete the game. They play up to what they need in order to play competitively and then they stop the story because when they play Pokemon they play it for the competitive and not the story and I I mean that's okay so now that we've discussed some reasons why people might be okay or might like the leaks uh, let's talk about why some people hate them so why some people avoid them first off it's the mystery when it comes to a new region, new Pokemon, new characters, some people want that experience fresh for the first time that they play the game. Traveling a region, building your team is all part of that. For that, they want everything to be new to them, and there's nothing wrong with that. A leak could reveal something and make it not as exciting when you first experience it yourself. Imagine being a kid during the holidays, getting ready to open your gifts, but you already know what one of them is or all of them. You already know what's inside. Sure, it's still going to be exciting to get that gift, but not as exciting if you were being totally surprised by what was in that box. The second reason why I think people hate leaks is that in most cases, they don't have control of the leaks. Building off my idea of mystery being the reason why people dislike it, sometimes you only want to know a few things, but you get more than you ask for. Like I said, I don't want to know any story leaks, but because I've been following the leaks for VGC, I've learned one or two things about the story that I could have not learned and been okay with. When you are not the one obtaining the information, it can be hard to control what you see or what you hear. This is why people avoid Twitter, Discord groups if they are avoiding certain leaks. Because a lot of those times you are not in control of who's tweeting at you, who's tweeting in general, who's in that Discord group. So if they reveal information you don't want to know, that's out of your control. Sure, it's easy to just read a few pace bins if you are just looking for competitive information, but when there are literally people streaming and sharing gameplay over Twitter and Discord over a week before release, it's going, you're, you will probably end up seeing things that you don't want to see if you s stay in those environments.
Overall, the one thing I love about Pokemon is that there are many different ways to play and enjoy the games, whether it's casual play, VGC, shiny hunting, let's plays, nuzlocks, RNG manipulation, or type challenges, the game is enjoyed in so many different ways, and that's what's great about it. You get bored of doing VGC, go shiny hunt for a little. You want to try some, you want to make the story more challenging, do a nuzlocke. Do I think it's do I think there's a right or wrong answer for following leaks? No. Are you a terrible casual player for knowing the whole story before you before the game releases, before you even buy the game? No. Are you a bad VGC player if you don't study the decks and the meta as soon as they leak out? No. But I don't think you're wrong for doing the opposite of those. The only thing I suggest to players is that you're respectful to how other people want to experience the game. Use the leak hashtag that you know that everyone's blocking. Ask people if you're in a friend group, hey, what are you okay with seeing? What are you okay with seeing and talking about when it comes to the leaks? And also don't criticize someone who feels differently than you. Just play the game you want to play and have fun with it. Anyways, that's gonna be all for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you have some leak free discussions in the comments down below tell me how you feel about leaks do you love them do you hate them do you need them i want to know how you feel in the comments down below anyway uh in the next couple days i plan on coming out with a video that talks about my plans for scarlet and violet i did try streaming yesterday uh streamed some of the Splatfest for the pokemon and splatoon Splatfest, and that was pretty fun so I'm still trying to figure out the kinks of it, seeing if it's worth it to stream my first playthrough instead of record it. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Either way, don't forget to like and subscribe, working our way up to a thousand. If you made it this far in the video, I wanna say thanks for watching. I do appreciate you. And until next time, I'm Zach. We'll see everyone later.